Hi there. Welcome to Lesson 3, Seven Steps to Building an Author Platform with Eva Poehler. In this third lesson, we're talking about building a website. You need a website so that you can collect customer information and reach readers. You can't do that with social media. So here's what I'll go over. Learning the pros and cons of building your site versus hiring someone else. Maintaining a consistent brand throughout the site. Implementing strategies for search engine optimization, whether you or someone else builds the site. Optimizing product pages. Incorporating universal referral links and or buy direct buttons and gaining trust. So first, build the site yourself or hire someone else. It's really a matter of your personality. Um, the advantages to doing it yourself, you've got full control. It's easy to update anything. It forces you to learn and be a more, more independent person. I am not a tech savvy person. And I feel like if I can do it, anyone can. And companies like Wix and Nerdly make it super easy, but it can frustrate people who don't have patience and are less tech savvy. So of course, the advantages to hiring someone, no stress, right? You get a prof professional looking site, but it can be really hard on your budget. And unless they teach you how to do it yourself, it's very difficult to update. I have a friend who every time she wants to change her book link, she has to wait for her website developer to do it for her. I would hate being that dependent on someone. So if you do hire someone, make sure they show you how to do the updates yourself. Now, I love using Wix. It has everything I need to run my author business. And like I said, I'm patient at learning new things. So it wasn't something that was super hard for me to do. And I think because of the templates that it has, it it's and it, it's gotten better over the years. I started using it years ago and it just improves and improves and improves. And so it's become even easier to use these days. So let's take a look. I'm gonna um I'm going to do a new share and go over to my um to my website and give you a, a kind of sense of, of what it looks like behind the scenes in the dashboard. So here is the dashboard. This is the home page of the dashboard. And as you can see, I can look at activity that's been going on in my site. Uh, this is information and I'll I'll click on that in just a minute. Um, I can this is where I can manage my store products, um, which since I sell directly would include my ebooks, my paperbacks, my hardcovers. And then I also sell some bookish swag in my shop. Um, this is where I can manage my orders um, and see, you know, uh, who ordered what. It 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 keeps them nicely organized for me. And um, I haven't been using the gift card thing. Later, I will, but that's an option. This is where I um, manage my blog. Um, the subscriptions I use differently. If I uh, this is there though, if I wanted to have a subscription program and use it this way, but I do have a subscription program. I just don't use it with that particular uh, mechanism. Um, but as you can see, the online program, which is what you're doing right now, is on here. I have a frequently asked question app. Um, I also have this Shippo app, which allows it integrates with my orders so that as soon as somebody orders a book from me, I've already got it set up where it knows the weight, it knows um, the package, and it can generate uh, the label for me. I just buy it through my Wix site, uh, through this Shippo app. And I print out the label and I'm ready to go. I can either drop it off at the at the post office or I can schedule um, a post person to come and pick it up. If I have a lot of them, which sometimes I will, especially at a release, you know, just have a bunch of books that I'm shipping out. I can even print out a manifest so that when I either have them pick up or I go drop them off, they don't have to scan each package. They can just scan the manifest. I love Shippo. It's excellent. Um Anyway, other things on here, I do have a, a site booster because I have a lot of pages on my website. And so in order to keep the speed up, I needed to add a little site booster to it. And that's something that you want to check as you grow. Um, you want to make sure that your site speed is, um, you know, you don't want it to get too laggy because then people get, um, they get impatient and they won't wait for your landing page to come up and then you lose customers. Um, so my contacts are all in one place. Uh, this is wonderful. I can um, add labels so that I can organize them and I can segment them. Any communication through my chat, 
my inbox, any forms I can look at here. All my automations are set up here, which I'm going to show you when we get into email marketing. I also have so many um, wonderful resources in this marketing and SEO as, uh, part of Wix. Um, it takes you through a search engine optimization checklist. So even though I'm going to go over optimizing for search engines in this course, uh, Wix teaches these, these things to you as well. Um, I also handle my email marketing through Wix. I know other people use other companies that they integrate with Wix. You can do that. Uh, but I think that it's a lot cheaper just to use the app that comes with your Wix dashboard. It's called Ascend and it integrates so smoothly and so perfectly and it's so cheap compared to the other companies. Um, I also can look, I love the analytics and the reports. I can see where the majority of my traffic is coming from. I can look and see of that traffic, which is converting into direct sales for me. Um, I can look at behaviors like oh, how, how long are customers st staying on particular pages? Um, different insights and things like that are really useful to me and uh, when it comes to figuring out my marketing strategy. Wix also generates financial reports for me. So it's easy for me to um, generate those for when it comes to tax time. I can also connect to different sales channels, and I'll be talking th about this later when I get into the social media marketing, but I can uh, integrate, I have integrated my store. If you sell direct, you have to be, you have to be selling direct. Uh, you can't just be sending traffic to Amazon or Barnes and Noble or whatever. You have to actually sell direct on your store to do this. But I am integrated with Facebook shop, Instagram shop, and Google merchant, which means that people on Facebook, Instagram, or Google merchant can will see my products and will be able to click on them and it will take them to the product page on my site, which is a one, free thing, you know, wonderful free bait to have out there for people to find me. This is where I choose various settings, like the way I'm set up my, uh, the way I collect taxes, uh, the way I set up my shipping rules, all those different kinds of settings, um, various apps that I have purchased to help me like I use Farah reviews so that people who buy direct from me will get an email a week or so later saying, hey, what did you think? And they submit the review and it gets posted on my site. It's all so automated. I love it. Um, I also have uh, something called Wiser Notify, which is like a FOMO app. It lets people know who's on my website and how many people have purchased this and reviews and things like that. It's really cool. And it it, it makes people who are visiting your site get that FOMO feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm missing out. These other people all love her. I better buy something from her too. <laughs> anyway, that's what I hope it's doing. Um, so, so there's all kinds of things here in the dashboard. I want to just give you a real quick view now of the editor. When you click on edit my site, you get this. Uh, that comes up here. You can choose which page you want to edit here, all the different pages you have. Uh, and this menu on the on the left sidebar, you know, you can add an element. It's really easy to operate. You want to add text and then you just slide it over. If you want to add an image, either an image that you've uploaded yourself or an image, um, there's some stock images that Wix has. And there's even a place where you can purchase images. Uh, all these different things that you can add the gallery or contact forms or whatever. It's so easy. You just drag and drop it on. And if you start with a template already in there, then there's so you don't really have a whole lot that you have to, to do. Now, I didn't like the color scheme that came with this template. It was like a, a red. It was more of like a, this was a paranormal template, uh, but it was more vampire-y looking, even though I write vampires. It was red and uh, black and white, I think. And I just, because I wanted to be that, I wanted that soothing. I wanted people to know that this isn't Stephen King horror, you know. It's not even the level of Anne Rice horror. Although I have horrifying moments, don't get me wrong, my books can be scary at times, but they're overall, they have more of a happily ever after kind of feel to them. So that's why I had to change the colors in my in my template and you can easily do that. In fact, there's um, a, a site design um, all here on the menu where you can take your theme and customize it and just choose a whole different palette. But I needed to customize mine even further so that instead of picking it, anyway, it's easy to do. I'm just telling you, <laughs> it's so easy. Um, it, 
anyway, I just wanted you to see what it looks like in the back end and, and how everything is so perfectly integrated. And, and Wix isn't the only one that does this. Shopify is another great one that people speak highly of. I have a lot of friends who use Shopify and they have beautiful, beautiful sites. Nerdly, I mentioned before, is specifically designed with authors in mind. And Nick Stevenson, the founder or co-founder of that company, he was one of my first teachers. I just absolutely love everything that he teaches and I'm also recommending him in my course uh, for further study. So just um, be aware that you have lots of options and um, and just take up, just kind of take a look at all the different options and weigh the pros and cons and, and seriously, seriously consider doing it yourself because once you learn, it's so easy to update and, um, and make changes. Okay. So moving on to the next one, using your website to maintain your brand. Now, as I mentioned before, when choosing your color palette and your templates uh, and your font, look at the templates first and get some ideas. Um, Wix provides so many to choose from and, um, and that can inspire you. And as I mentioned, Wix and Nerdly will also make it easy to maintain the consistency in your font and in your colors. As I mentioned before, I recommend using a branded header. Now, I've seen a lot of beautiful websites that have a slideshow at the top. And that's nice, you know, it is. And I even experimented with doing that too, but I found it to, to do two things. One, it made the website slower to load because there were all these images that needed to come up on the header. Also, it slowed down, <clears throat> you know, the reader's journey through the site because they had to wait and figure out what is this because the images might not have branded the website uh, as well as a header might. And the gallery of images that you're wanting to show off can easily come later. They don't need to be the first thing. So for that reason, I recommend that you use uh, a, a static header image at the top. It'll load faster. It'll show your brand right away. People won't have to wait for things to load to figure out what this is or wait for the right image to come along for them to understand, oh, this is this is what I'm looking for. You know, you don't wanna confuse them. Those moments of confusion cause hesitation and they lose you buyers. Um, and then I also, shoot, I wanted to show you, now I've gotta go all the way back over there. I wanted to show you while I was there, how you can use the round logo for your favicon and, and maybe even your footer. And I'll just show you by showing you my website again. Um, if you notice up here at the top of the tab is a round logo. This is your favicon. It's also right here in my in my uh, header. It, it this is something that you set up in the settings on the back end. You just add a round uh, logo so that when people and you see Wix has one, um, Zoom, which is what I'm using to make this video. Uh, oh, here it is. Has their Zoom over here. So. Make sure you have a round image that works well with that. And, and, and as I mentioned, having a banner at the top is great, but you might want to find a place to put your round logo to. And a great place to put that, if it's not in your header, would be down in your footer, just to make consistency in your brand. So let me go back over to the slideshow, and we will just continue there. One other thing that I wanted to mention about maintaining your brand is keeping a consistent voice in your blog updates. And in a moment, I'll talk about why blog updates are important, but that's another place where your personality of your brand can shine through. So let's talk a little bit more about implementing SEO or search engine optimization, because no matter how pretty and how consistent your website is, if you don't show up in search results, you're it's not going to do you any good. And so some experts have designed this, this pyramid or this triangle, some have even called it Maslow's hierarchy of SEO, um, to kind of help you understand the various um, elements and how important they are. And I'm starting at the bottom of the pyramid with using a navigation hierarchy and internal links to help search engines understand and index your site. All this means is when you create your menu, you want to have 
um, main, like five, maybe five main uh, items that show up in your menu. And then there's drop down menus or sub items, sub menus. And this kind of hierarchy where there's top level menu items, lower level menu, this helps your your search engines understand the way your pages are linked and it helps them to better index your site. So you don't just want all one level. You want to try to find a way to have a sub menu to help. It just helps those search engines uh, lock in and understand. You also want to use internal links throughout your website. And what that means is you have a page that links to another one of your page. So on my homepage at the very bottom is meet Eva with a brief introduction to who I am and uh, a, a button that takes you to my full bio, okay? Or when you're on um, a blog post, any blog post that I write will link to another post in my site. These internal links that link your pages together make it even that much easier for these search engines to see how your site pages relate to each other. A very, very important on that technical end, okay? Another thing that you can help these search engines, um, you can help them is by using external links. This is where your site links to other sites. And, and, and so it would be great if you could get other sites to link back to you. And one way you can do this is simply by having social media profiles everywhere and you link to your social media profiles. And then in the bios of those social media profiles, you link back to your website. But trying to find ways to get people to link back to you, like maybe you interview them and you say, hey, I did. You know, can I do an interview you? And, and if so, will you post this interview on your site somewhere? You know, find ways to get other people to link back to you. And what this does is it makes Google feel, it makes your site appear well-connected and important to search engines and lifts you up higher in the search results. If you're just this website that's not connected to any other site and no other sites are connected to you, you, you don't look important enough to be high up in the search results. So in order to look important, you need those external links that you link to and you want others to link back. A another way you can get people to link to you is with valuable blog content, which I am going to talk about a little bit more in a minute. But if you write um, information that other people value, then they'll it'll become shareable. And when they share it, that will make your site appear more relevant and important to search engines. Oh, I just, that was the next point. I thought I was going ahead, but it was actually my next point. Make others more likely to link to your site by offering helpful content. Um, and you can use interviews. And make sure the menu is easy to navigate and the site speed high. You don't want a laggy site. Incorporate keywords. Words and phrases your target consumer is likely to use when searching for your book. You can use them in your headings, in paragraphs, and in the alternate text for images. Alternate text, in case you don't know. Uh, when a blind person uses a website, their website will, their computer will read the alternate text to them as a way of describing what the image is. You can plant keywords in that alternate text to make it even that much easier for search engines to understand what your site's about. Now back to the thing about the blog. Updating your blog at least once a month is important. It does a couple of things. It builds your credibility to your audience if you're offering information that they value. It could be information that they find entertaining. It can be information that they find useful. Somehow, you know that ideal customer Try to come up with something once a month, and it doesn't have to be long, um, just uh, 200 to maybe 500 words, mostly images. Um, but by by doing that, you not only make it more likely that people are going to share your posts and thus provide these external links to your site, but it's also going to update your website in the eyes of a search engine. When a site hasn't been updated for a long, 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 long time. Google thinks it's a stale site that it's not growing. It's, it's not progressive. It's not expanding. It's not anything new. They like new content, search engines do. So if you're updating at least once a month with a blog post, you are 
killing so many birds with one stone. I hate that saying because I don't like violence against birds, but <laughs> you know what I mean? The more bang you can get for your buck, for every action that you do, if you can get multiple results out of it, that's what I'm all about. And writing a blog post can do so many things for you. It helps with your search engine optimization. It helps with your um, target customer being interested and wanting to share and wanting to get the external links uh, linked back to your site. It also builds your credibility and your authority, and it gives you content that you can then share across all your social media platforms very easily by writing one post. Uh, most templates will have built-in share buttons at the bottom. You can share it to Facebook, to Twitter, to LinkedIn, to Pinterest, to wherever you know you want to share it. And, and you just write one post and it goes to all these different places. And it's just more bait that you're putting out there to draw your ideal customer back to you. You also want to optimize your product pages. And this pretty much goes without saying. I, I don't think I'm telling you anything that you don't already know. That whether you plan to refer traffic to other vendors or sell books directly on your own site or both, your product pages should be optimized to make people buy. If people are landing or if people are clicking on an ad or somehow, you know, being driven over to your site and they take no action, it's because your product page is not strong enough. You want to make it pleasing to the eye. You want to make sure it's nicely formatted. Include an image of your very professional looking book cover and which accurately conveys the book's genre so people know what they're getting. Provide a short blurb, description, and accurate, not misleading. You know, you don't, some, when I first started writing, I did think that my blurb just had to make people buy, you know? And then I realized, no, it has to make the right people buy. And you need to make sure your blurb does that, that it makes the right people buy. It doesn't make everybody buy. Your blurb should let people who don't want that kind of book know because you don't want that person buying and reading your book and then being disappointed and leaving you a bad review. You want to make sure that you let people know what formats that book is available in. And I recommend that you make it available in all the formats. Not just ebooks, not just paperbacks, but hardcovers and audiobooks. And you're just getting started, so don't try to do it all at once. Just put it on your list of things that you will eventually get to. Make that an objective of yours that you will eventually have your book available in all the formats. I have yet to make large print versions of mine and with an audience that's mostly over 40, that is a shame. And so that is something that is on my list of things that I still need to do. And I've been doing this for 10 years. The list never ends, I'm telling you. Uh, also make sure that you showcase a few of your favorite reviews. You want to build trust and credibility with these product pages. And by bringing in some of the best reviews, uh, especially if you can find a fellow author who will give you a blurb, that would really, really help. Or one thing I did early in my career, and I don't do it anymore, but I just did it with a, a couple of books when I was getting started, was that I I got uh, Kirkus reviews for them. Now, you're not guaranteed a good review, so you could spend all this money and then end up getting this review you can't use. But luckily, I was able to get two. I I, I bought two and I got two good reviews. So I was able, I'm able to use snippets of this, of these reviews in my product pages and in my other marketing materials. So when you're first getting started and you might not have a famous author friend that you can rely on to give you a blurb, or you might not have accumulated reading reader reviews yet, do the Kirkus review thing. It's, it costs, I think it's like 250 or 300 bucks, but it pays for itself. I'm telling you, I use, I use it all the time. I still use it. Um, and then provide clickable buttons. And we're going to get more into buttons. Let me just talk a little bit more about buttons. So, you know, different authors are doing different things right now. I used to just refer traffic. I, I have only just started selling direct in my store in the past six months, maybe. I don't even know if it's been that long. I'm so gung-ho about it, though. I'm making so much more money doing it. But for the longest time, for the bulk of my career, I just referred traffic. I drove traffic to my site and then I referred it to Amazon, where you can buy my book on Amazon, on Apple, on Nook, on Kobo, on Google Play, on Smashwords and, uh, you know, all the places. And, uh, and, and yeah, I still made okay money with the royalties. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm thankful that all those vendors are selling my books. I truly, truly am. But, you know, they take their cut. And when you sell direct, <laughs> you get to keep, it's especially 
oh, nice when you're selling like a 99 cent book and you're like, yes, I get to keep all 99 of those cents. <laughs> but it's even thrilling when you sell a 1999 book and you're like, yes, I get to keep all 1999 of that money. So consider it. And I'm going to recommend in the resources that I have in this module that you take a look at um, Morgana Best. She has a book called Stop Making Others Rich with a companion course that I found to be excellent. It's it, it set me up for success. And I highly recommend that if you want to look into selling your eBooks, paperbacks, hardcovers, audiobooks, um, even bookish swag directly on your site, Morgana Best is the person to go look up. And I'll have a link in my course. But when it comes to designing your product pages, you have to make this decision. Are you going to put all the links? And I have that for the longest time. I'm talking so many links uh, under each cover. Golly, I must have had like at least eight links under each cover. And uh, it's only been recently that I finally trimmed that down. And what I did was I got books to read. Books to read are universal links that draft to digital will create for you for free. And so what you do is you get one link and then it takes the reader to a page that looks like this on the left. This is showing you that it's available in ebook at these vendors. It's available in paperback at these and hardcover at these and audiobook. At one link to rule them all. It looks so much nicer on a product page. And then, so what I do is I have my product page with my cover and there are four buttons. One says ebook, so they can buy my ebook directly from me. One says paperback, they can buy the paperback directly from me. One says hardback, also from me. And then one that says other stores. And it's this uh, books to read link. It takes them to all the other vendors and they pick which one they want. So, that's something that you have to decide about. Do you want to just drive the traffic to the other vendors or do you want to also sell yourself? Now, if you do decide to, to send traffic to the other vendors, you should definitely apply to be an affiliate of as many of them as you can. And to, by doing that, you'll, you'll make a little bit more money. Um, I probably make between 50 and 100 bucks a month on my Amazon affiliate um, income. So, you know, I mean, it's not a ton of money, but you know, it's still money. It all adds up. I'm always telling my students at Trinity University, create multiple streams of income. If you can create, especially multiple passive streams of income, you know, the more, the, 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 the more secure you'll be, especially when, if you're working in an industry where things can go south really quickly. So, do include affiliate links if you're going to refer traffic to these other places. It's so easy to set up. You, some of these places you apply and you're immediately accepted and some of them take a couple of days. But once you get an affiliate tag, you you just put it in. If you use books to read, you just there's a place where you can put in your affiliate links and then it just automatically adds them in for you. It's so easy. There are other universal links companies that do that too. I used Genius Links for many years and was very happy with them, but that's when I was using like eight different buttons for each book. Um, so anyway, back to selling direct, you will need a store. And I already showed you that there is one integrated with Wix. Nerdly has one. Shopify, everyone raves on that one. And that's the one that uh, Morgana Best uses. Um, I mentioned her book to you already and highly recommend that you consider selling direct. It's so thrilling. Another wonderful thing, and I'm sorry if I'm going off a little bit too much on this, but you know how Amazon pays you like 60 days later than the sell. When you sell direct, you get paid throughout the month. Wix pays me almost every day I get money from Wix. It's nice having money coming in all the time like that, especially if you have a son in college and, and tuition is due and all of a sudden you're like, oh, you know, I, I'm a little short. Well, not if you're selling direct because more money just keeps coming in. You don't have to wait till the end of the month to get your big fat paycheck from Amazon, you know? Anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about gaining trust. The key to turning traffic into customers is definitely trust. 
So what can you do to build credibility and help that traffic trust you to provide them with a quality experience for their money? You don't want to confuse visitors. Help them know they're in the right place with consistent branding and clear navigation. Any moment of, of confusion or hesitation loses you potential customers. Make sure everything on your site works and takes them to the right place. I constantly, I mean, anytime I do an update, I go on both my mobile device and my laptop and I double check anything that I changed and make sure the links are going to the right places. Provide product pages with accurate descriptions and customer reviews. I already covered that. Include a bio section that details any awards, degrees, number of books you've published, or any credentials that will make your ideal customer trust you. So just to give you an example, if your ideal customer is someone who is, you know, if you're writing books that are about, maybe you're writing nonfiction books about gardening, and maybe you haven't published a whole lot of books, but you have are a master gardener and you've been a gardener for so many years and you provide fruits and vegetables to all your friends and family because you garden so much. I mean, those are things that you mention in the bio. If that's something that's going to appeal to your ideal customer, I mean, my ideal customer doesn't want to know if I have, you know, if I grow watermelons and cantaloupes and give them to everybody in, in, in my neighborhood, that's not something that's important to them, but it might be to your audience. So when you're de de building that bio, again, you're thinking about that ideal customer and what will make them trust you. Always reply promptly and courteously to inquiries you receive through contact forms, emails, or a chat box on your website. And consider adding a review app. I mentioned Farah before. I highly recommend it. Integrates very smoothly with Wix. And then I also use the Wiser, that should be Wiser Notify uh, for my FOMO app, which I'll show you in a little while. So let's take a look behind the scenes again. Um, and once again, I want to show you my Wix dashboard and, and help you get a sense before we finish up of a few things. Actually, not the, the dashboard so much as the, I want you to see the apps uh, on my on my website and how they look and and why I recommend them. Just really quickly, wanted you to see. So when someone comes to my website for the first time, I better refresh this because it's not showing the notifications because I clicked off of them. But uh, if you go to, I'm just going to quickly show you since I talked about product pages. First of all, notice that my menu, for the, for the longest time, my menu just had five things, which is what I tell my students you need, five things. I only recently adva uh, added the advice for authors to send them to this course that I created. But for the longest time, it's just been these five things. And then each, most of these things have a drop down menu. And I, you don't have to do it for every single one. I just have so much stuff because I've been doing this for a long time. I have premium memberships and affiliate program and another program called Bomya. These are all my books. And then I have a separate place for audiobooks because I work with Dreamscape. Um, they're a wide distributor. They're um, a select distributor. So they come to you. You don't get to uh, apply to them. And I I cannot sell my books directly on my site, but I don't mind because I make a lot of money with them. I'm really happy with them. But because of that, I have a separate section where I show them all the vendors. Um, I have my about, which also has a contact form. Um, I have a little place where I invite them to come to the Polar Bear Lounge, which is my community on Facebook, which I'm going to talk about in a little while. And then I have a place where I have um, a curated list of interviews and mentions of me. And this is another way that I have external links going to these places that have interviewed me, YouTubers or other authors that have interviewed me, um, any newspaper or podcast or anything that has interviewed me. I if most of them, it, like I said, it's curated. I, I add that in there because I'm linking to a place that is linking back to me and that helps with SEO. And then I also have my frequently asked questions. Now my store has a lot of things on it because just recently I started experimenting with some drop shipping. That's why you see all these bookish things down below, but it starts off at the top with all my series. And so a person can just come directly to my store and go directly to for example, my Mystery House series, which is my best-selling supernatural mystery series, if they come here to a product page, they will see, well, this is not actually the product page, this is the series page, but they will see that they can get the Mystery House series in ebook, they can get it in paperback, and they can get it in hardcover, and, and just by clicking an arrow, they can get, there's 
now 11 books in this series. So this um, has navigation to take them to the other books. But if they were to click on one of them, like say the first ebook here, it would take them to a product page. And this product page has that add to cart button. It shows that there are four reviews of people who have reviewed on my site. But I also include reviews that I took off of um, Amazon and from a book lover blog and I think Goodreads and added them. And this is something you should do before, before you start garnering these reviews and you have no reviews. If you're selling direct, you can just add them in your description and then you'll have some reviews built in. But then you see the Farah app at work down here. Uh, it just integrates so nicely and adds all the reviews in there. And then I have this related products um, carousel at the bottom. It, it, it has all the other books in the series. So if a person um, you know, decided, well, maybe I'll get the, you know, the other books in the series as well. They're listed here uh, for them to peruse. Um, I also wanted to mention that other things that I've set up that you can experiment with later. If a person does add this to cart and they go and they view their cart, uh, it triggers this or what they see is these related bookish products that I decided to experiment with a little carousel down at the bottom of things that they might want to add on to their order. Um, so this is how it looks for my direct sell product page. Um, but a person might first, most of my Facebook ads will send them to this landing page instead, because I, I, I have lots of author friends who feel that they do not need to have links to Amazon. Oh, by the way, I have this pop up when they come to the page, it says, join our list. And I get a lot of email. Um, I used to think I would never do pop ups because I don't really, in, you know, I don't really like them very much when I'm on sites, but this has been very, very fruitful for me. Um, but anyway, you land my Facebook ads uh, and Google ads uh, will drive you to this page uh, instead of my direct sell product page where <clears throat> I list all the books in the Mystery House series. And there's the four buttons I was mentioning, ebook, paperback, hard cover, and other stores. And this gives them the price of each um, format <clears throat> along with the description. And so the Facebook ad will draw them here. Now I used to have Amazon as the first button. And then I think Apple and Nook and you know all these buttons. And then I would have this little button at the bottom that might say buy direct, but I have completely switched in my mindset. And now three of the four buttons lead to my direct store. And in order to go to one of the other stores, they simply click the books to read, which is what I showed you earlier. So I actually have authors, though, that don't feel inclined to even link to the other stores anymore. They want all the direct traffic for themselves. But I haven't gotten to that point yet. I feel like I have a lot of people that still feel very loyal to Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Kobo. And so I and I want to drive that traffic from Facebook to my website, not directly to the retailers, because I want to be able to fire my pixel and pick up contact information so that I can retarget them. And um, so for that reason, I still offer links to other vendors. I do have my affiliate links in there so I can make extra money if they buy at the other vendors. And so this is the kind of page that I drive them to. Um, and I also, instead of driving them to the first book, which you could very well do, and a lot of people set it up this way, I opted to create a series page because for this particular series, uh, these books can be read in any order. And so I want, and I say that at the top, and I want people to be able to say, okay, is do I want that book or do I want to start with one of these others? So anyway, uh, I just wanted to, to kind of like show you a little bit about the functionality. I wanted to show you my navigation, um, how it works. Now, the news is the blog that I was talking about, and I did want to quickly uh, click on that and just kind of show you what I was talking about. I'm going to get more into content marketing in a minute, but I just wanted to just give you a quick look that uh, my blog uh, that I, I try to create evergreen content and I get varying levels of views on these posts. I have some that are just like maybe 35, another 126, but I have one post in here that has over 7,000 views. And uh, as you can see, most of them are around 50, 50 views. Um, 
but there's one here it is this oh that's a kickstarter campaign so i drew i i had a lot of people uh, do my kickstarter campaign but i have one in here i think it's called your free online reading journal that has like seven thousand where'd it go sorry <laughs> I'm, i don't like wasting your time um, maybe you'll just have to take my word for it that there is in here a post that has over 7,000 reviews in it. And I, it's just not uh, coming up for me um, really fast. But I did want to point out, and I'll be talking about this more later, that, oh, here it is. Your online reading journal has 7,950 views. So what these blog posts end up doing for your website is they create more bait. So I, when I write uh, one of these um, posts, uh, I try to give some value to them. You know, like here's a reading log that you can download and use for yourself. Here's a book review template that can help you write easy, fast book reviews. And here's a reading journal template that you can use. But at the same time that I'm giving them something of value, I'm also letting them know about, you know, my books, it's not, it's not just about serving them, but it's also about baiting them, right? So I let them know that um, that they can click links to, to, to get these online things, but then if they're looking for something new to read that they can write reviews on and put in their journal, here are some recommendations. And so I have these books that they can click on and learn more about. Uh, and then I also have these shareable buttons down here. And on many of my posts, I, I also, on many of my posts, I also put this click here to retweet. It's a free service where if the person clicks, it 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 will take them to Twitter and they can post the tweet and uh, spread the word for me. But even if they don't uh, click to retweet there, they can, you know, share on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook. And I come and do that on my own posts. On a regular basis, I will reuse what I'm calling this evergreen content um, to put more baits out in on the internet spheres. So that wraps it up for this particular lesson. Um, we have just finished uh, lesson three, building a website. And now we are going to move on to the fourth lesson, which is driving free traffic. So thank you. Um, I'll see you in the next module.